So I was saying, um, for example, when I worked at this company, I won't say which company, and but just here's an example of an advertisement that is something like, um, you know, what I'm, what I'm talking about. This is a two-page ad for um, children's products by this company called what is that? Sutash. Sutash. Yeah. In the bottom right corner, you see that it's by the Sutash company, but these are you know various children's product brands like it, little um, you know independent brands. There's Hoop Trick, Buu Mix, and it looks like Mini Mix. Okay. So the strategy here was, I guess, to advertise the, um, the the collection of these endorsed brands, children's brands, by just you know showing that they're made by this company, Sutash, maybe capitalizing on the trust that this parent company, Sutash, had in the marketplace. So what kind of magazines would you want to publish this ad in? Children's products. And you can see on the left side it says, um, in our lives, is there anything more valuable, or what, what can be more valuable than our children? So clearly here, the target market, or the target audience is mothers, right? Mothers of children that can use these types of children's products. So if we look at potential children's magazines, uh, and you see them on the bottom left by name, magazine name, and the type. And I'll, let me, I'll enlarge this for you so you can see it a bit better. Um, you know, the, the type, the name, um, the magazine type, women's home decoration, food, TV guide, mom and baby, and food. Period is uh, um, November, I guess, Cussin. And then the media group that uh, is responsible for publishing it. And the type is a two-page spread, right? You can see like a centerfold, you know, a two-page spread. And now I will um, enlarge this so you can look a bit more closely. So this is it blown up. We have the circulation figures for 2008 August. And the um, total circulation plus subscription. Okay, so there's subscribers and then there's just free publications which are on sale in like supermarkets and things like that. So the gross price in Yeni Turkish Lira, okay, so in Lira, uh, the gross price for a full page ad, and then we have the unit price. And what do you notice? Yes, you notice that the net price, the discount ratio, this is the big thing that the eye-opening thing, the actual price that is paid is one-tenth or one, you know, roughly one-ninth, one-tenth of the real price that it, that, or the, the, sorry, the, the list price, the price that they listed at, that's the gross price. So this is what you see in the in the rate cards, the, the price that's quoted initially is this gross price but by dealing with in, in this case by dealing with a media agency that gets they're able to negotiate um, this is one of the benefits of working with a media agency if you're a big enough company is that they they have a lot of power negotiating because they've got lots of clients and they're they're responsible for making a lot of ad buys so they help you get this discount if it's possible but still, you should be aware that it's, it is quite possible to negotiate for much, much lower prices than what's quoted. And this is true across the media. So you see then also the cost per thousand in dollar terms. And this is just, you know, tirage means the um, uh, circulation and subscription, you know, the total, the total yayin, the total, total amount of magazines that are published. Um, so yeah, that just, that's just what I wanted to illustrate here is that you, you know, these really, you know, incredible discounts are available, uh, if you, um, are able to negotiate for them. What's next? Um, the impact. Okay. So we're making a decision about which, 
media to use, we have to think about the impact on the audience, right? We want to make sure that we're getting the maximum effect. We're talking before, we talked about, you know, the costs, you know, the, um, the reach and frequency, etc. But we also need to think about what's the, the creative impact, you know, what's the characteristics of the message. I mean, you know, for example, television uses um, visuals, moving visuals, sound. It's a very high impact media. Going back to radio, it's, you know, relatively lower impact, right? Because it's often a background stimulus. Um, not like you're the focus of your full attention. People are driving their car and listening to the radio. So, you know, billboards or banner ads, you know, the impact is quite low. So we have to think about that. And this brings up what I was telling you before about the different choice of magazines. Remember we were talking about the executive magazines, you know, the magazines that had executive level readers. And I said, well, sometimes magazines are just, you know, higher quality than other magazines or newspapers might be a higher quality than other newspapers or the creative tone or the you know the tone that's given by the media like serious tone or uh, you know sad you know potentially if it's like um, you're watching a news program with very you know depressing news like for example about the coronavirus you know, which is on our minds all, all the time nowadays on every media we look at. Well, that editorial quality and that tone can rub off on the advertisement that you put in it. And we call that the qualitative media effect. And we said, you know, the media is the message. Um, if you remember a while back when we talked about source, message, and channel factors, one of the channel factors that we talked about was this idea of the media is the message. Remember, we talked about this qualitative media effect that, you know, certain media, if they're very high quality, they kind of lend that quality to your ad or they can potentially be a, a neg have a negative impact if it's like a very low quality medium or if it's a very uh, serious drama versus a very light-hearted comedy, right? So, you know, the, the type of medium that you're advertising in definitely does have this impact on your ad, potentially. There's also this effect, which is illustrated here. I don't know if you recognize, do you recognize this story maybe from your childhood? Uh, remember Gulliver, Gulliver's Travels? This this guy, he's traveling in a boat or whatever, he gets in a storm or something, gets shipwrecked and washed up on this island, and it just happens to be inhabited by little people, which they called Lilliputians. Do you remember Lilliput? So here you see all the Lilliputians, the Lilliput people, tying down Gulliver, right? And what I want to illustrate here is that by working together, you see that they're able to, you know, tie him up. But individually, right, if they were trying to do this as individuals, fighting him or trying to subdue him, it would be completely ineffective, right? So what am I trying to illustrate here? That media working together can have an impact greater than the sum of their individual parts. And we call this the synergistic effect that, you know, uh, like a radio ad by itself may not have a very great impact. But if you've established the campaign with a television ad first, and you've got that imagery established in people's minds, and then later on, or, you know, even perhaps, you know, simultaneously, although typically it's, it's good to wait, you know, some time, a few weeks, perhaps, then you show, then you, then you, run the uh, the uh, radio ads, maybe some billboard ads, these can have a much greater impact because they're all working together. So you create this kind of um, environment, this ecosystem, if you will, of 
your advertisements so that they're visible and you can see them and hear them in a you know 360 degrees but taken individually if you just did one individually at a time you wouldn't have that type of an impact but if you can do this in an integrated way if you know with integrated marketing communications then you can capitalize on this effect the synergy so this is extremely important to remember and this is why you know, I had for your projects, I asked you to do a television ad, right, that would act as like a bulldozer, knock down the trees and pave the way for the rest of the campaign. But it has to be integrated. If you're not doing it integrated, then it doesn't really work. The synergistic effect no, it doesn't, doesn't have the same impact. There's also what's known as the carryover effect. The carryover effect <clears throat> is the effect in an audience's mind that sustains between periods of advertising. So oftentimes when we make schedules, we schedule advertising and then we drop off the advertising and we wait some through some period of inactivity and then we ramp up the advertising again. This carryover effect kind of sustains the advertising in, in our memory and it allows us to get the most out of our budget. <clears throat> so if we schedule, um, actually, let me talk about this carryover effect. I'll show you it again when we talk about scheduling the media, okay? So you'll see, I'll, I'll illustrate it in case it's not very clear at this point, that the idea is just that you don't always have to be on air. You can take breaks and then pick up again at a later time. You may not be as 100% impact or effect but maybe, you know, through that week of inactivity or the time when you're not running ads, people still remember. You're still in their memory. And then you pick up at a higher point later on, not at zero. That's the carryover effect. So let's talk about how we schedule media. First of all, in terms of, you know, the timing and the placement of messages. When we're talking about how to you know, schedule it in terms of the time and the place, an ideal con, you know, there's this ideal concept called aperture. You know, in a um, photography setting, aperture is like the opening in the, um, that allows light into the camera. So this is what it looks like, you know, if you look in a camera lens and you look inside with a, you know, single lens reflex camera, you see this kind of aperture that opens and closes. In advertising, it means like we want to, the aperture concept means, you know, imagine the ideal time and place when you can give an advertisement so that it has the maximum impact on your audience, right? Imagine it. It's like the ideal. It's not, it, it's not possible in real life to have this perfect aperture, but you can get close. And it's like an ideal to strive for. So this is the goal of when you're in, in media planning and scheduling is to think what is the best time and place that we can hit our audience with a message when they're going to be most receptive, most vulnerable to take action. So, you know, here with various different apertures and f-stops for a camera, if our target audience looks like this, right, that's not perfect. It's, you know, too big. The aperture is too big. We've got too much waste, perhaps. And here, similarly, you know, it's too small. But where is it just right? Just right there. That's the perfect coverage, the perfect time and place. It's like hitting the sweet spot. You know what the sweet spot is in sports? With a bat, if you're playing baseball, the sweet spot is that part right there, you know, with the red dot, that if the ball connects and it hits there, you can launch that baseball out of the park. Or in, if with golf, you know, the driver, if you hit the ball right in the, that part there, it just, the ball takes off and goes. Or if you're playing tennis, right, oversized rackets, the benefit is that they have a larger sweet spot. So we're trying to hit the sweet spot of the consumer's, you know, mind frame, you know, their, their psychological status when they're most when they're hungriest we show them a message for food when they're driving by mcdonald's we have a billboard right beforehand or we use the radio during drive time 
So this is the ideal, this aperture concept. We'll come back to it.